oof, it's nice if you nail the exposure. Here we go. Well, it's been a while. It's been, yeah, it's been a long, long time since I had a chance to go out and do some vlogging. Uh, I have been out quite a bit doing some photography. I just haven't taken the, I haven't filmed it, really. Um, reason being, I've, I've spent quite a lot of time doing film photography and the kind of brain power and the energy that takes it doesn't really allow an awful lot of room for setting up film cameras and doing the vlog side of things. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of the reason. And Heinz, the other reason I can usually see when you do a digital photo, you can see in the back if it's going to be a, if it's worked or not. <laughs> Obviously, when you're doing film photography, very different, very different story. You have to wait until you get them uh, processed, the film processed, before you know if you've got any crackers or any absolute howlers so that's always been in the back of my mind having you know given the whole kind of vlog spiel chat how i'm doing this blah 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 this is what i've set up this is the composition this is my settings and then getting the, the, the photos back and they're just abysmal so i've yeah I've, I've i've really wanted to just get a lot more i guess more confident in the the film side of things um analog photography uh and and to be honest, to be fair to myself, they've actually come. Most roles have come back with some really good shots on them, and I've I've been pleasantly surprised. So I wish I had vlogged more of those kind of learnings, um, but I haven't. So that's that's just how it is. But for today, what's the plan for today? I'm in Fife. I'm in just in Fife. Just gone over the bridge. I don't know if you can see it behind me, um, Fourth Road Bridge there, and I am in North Queensferry. And I've never been here before. I literally just stay over the water and I've never been here before. There's a kind of, like a textbook shot of the rail bridge that goes through, or the shot itself is kind of tunneled through some of the buildings on North Queensferry. Um, so I'm going to have a wee investigation to where that is. I think I can kind of see it from here. But unfortunately, one of the buildings has a lot of scaffolding around it. So... It, it, it might not happen, but there's another kind of um, jetty landing pier type of thing not far from here. Um, and I'm going to have a wee investigation there. I think I might have to wait longer until the tide's further in. Um, but maybe not, because it, it sits actually quite a bit off the off the land, which is a bit peculiar. But anyway, um, so this is kind of just a, a straightforward structure. It looks like a jetty. I don't know what purpose it serves apart from that, but it's not attached to the land. I'm not too sure. So I'm going to have a look at that. I think it's just really behind these buildings where I'm sitting at the moment. But uh, weather-wise, it's grey. It's not very exciting. I brought quite a few cameras with me. I brought the little 35mm um, point-and-shoot, just because I've got a couple of frames left on that that I just want to finish and get processed. The, I brought my um, the Sony Digital A7 III and the... Uh, Mamiya medium format so yeah bag full of bag full of uh, cameras and a bag full of film as well and I think the the good thing with the Mamiya you can change its back so you can put a, a color film on you can you, know, you can swap things out so I brought a couple of backs one has a black and white film loaded up already uh, which would be quite good for this kind of weather because there's just no color at all it's just it's bright but it's gray there's no um yeah, there's no kind of interest in light at all. So best option for that one is just to stick with black and white, especially with some um, when there's water involved and some structures and things like that. I do quite a lot of that anyway. So it's I would have probably aired towards that, even if it was a, a beautiful, um, colourful, sunny day. Uh, but first, first, I'm going to head along and check this location out, see if it's any good, see if the scaffolding can be positioned in such a way that I, I don't get that in the, the shot. And then I'm just going to tour around Fife uh, along the coastal route and loop up, loop round past, you know, um, Anstruther Creels, um, up to St Andrews possibly, head along there and maybe head back in uh, inland a bit and go through, you know, Stirling, Perthshire, all that kind of area, uh, and see what we see what we can come up with there. Hoping the weather breaks a little bit for some nice um, 
shots, but if it doesn't, it doesn't. It's a nice day out with the, the overuse of some black and white film. Okay. I understand now why it's not attached to land. It's uh, it's seen better days, put it that way. It's definitely a, a lot more kind of structurally decrepit than what um, what I thought. I haven't seen many pictures of this. I did spy it on maps. I was looking around coastal areas of, of Fife to find out if there was any kind of structures and things like that I could visit to, to photograph. And I came across this on um, yeah on maps. So obviously the clarity was kind of limited. I just saw this random, which quite evidently looked like a pier or jetty, but I was confused why it wasn't attached to the land. And that's why it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a wreck really. But I'm gonna try and get a couple of pictures of it. Um, I'm gonna start up here. Fortunately enough, there's a clearing. Maybe there's a wee bit more down there um, in this, uh, Kind of brush the of of bushes and things so i'm going to take a shot from a bit of a higher vantage point which is probably here because it's got a nicer offset further down it's going to kind of square off a bit too much and you won't get the the rest of the structure so i'm going to try to i'm just going to try up here take a I'm going to log exposure we've got some nice movement in the water but not too much so just to soften that up, there's not an awful lot of distraction behind it. Some of the the, the islands in the on the fourth are, are quite a bit in the distance, and because I'm high up, I'm kind of looking down. So hopefully I'll be able to take them out of the the shot. But we'll see. We'll see how we get on. And uh, yeah, glad I found something to start off. Lee Big Stopper is on. We've set it at uh, ISO 100, F9, and that's given us a uh, exposure of 10 seconds. So two second delay timer on, stop any wobble from pressing the shutter release and uh, 10 second count and that's us. Yeah, happy with that. Um, nothing jaw dropping, just a nice structure. Hopefully get some nice detail pulled out with there, uh, because it's actually got moss and, yeah, some obviously a lot of broken wood and things through it as well. So hopefully pull out some nice detail on those shots. So yeah, very straightforward. F9, ISO 100, stabilized up with the uh, tripod, two second uh, delay in the timer. And that gave us a, a 10 second exposure. Just just enough just to make everything nice and smooth. There's not an awful lot of movement in the water, but just, just enough just to kind of mirror that down so it's nice and silky smooth. Okay, I couldn't quite resist. Whilst I was putting my uh, the digital camera away, I thought, well, let's just give this a go with um, the, the medium format the film camera. So what I'm doing here is takes a wee bit of, of figuring out, obviously, because it's it's manual. It does have a light meter, but when you're talking long exposures, light meter doesn't really uh, come into play because you've got various other kind of factors, reciprocity and all those kind of things. When um, the film, when it's open to light for longer, it doesn't have the same reaction, all those kind of things. Um, so I'm using, I took a reading without the Lee little stopper on, so that's six stops. Without that on, and it was giving me a reading of, um, this is it, F16 on um, Cinestill uh, X, which is a film speed of 120. Uh, that was giving me a, a 30th of a second. Um, so with the Lee app that's in my phone, I um, that, that gave me a reading of three seconds. But because of reciprocity, I'm going to just up that to four. And I might do one with five seconds as well. So four seconds and a five seconds exposure. Um, again, when you're talking seconds with film, you've, you've got to... Yeah, a bit of a guessing game, to be honest. But uh, you've got to allow for that uh, and, you know, fundamentally overexpose, which I'm pretty happy with doing anyway. You know, you, you, you get a lot of uh, dynamic range in film. So overexposing is not that much of a... 
you know, within reason, obviously, not much of a, a deal breaker. And I kind of want this a bit more high key because there's not an awful lot of information apart from the structure. Um, so all the various factors you have to do here is, you, you know, because it's quite a big mirror camera, mirror action camera, you lock the mirror up, you make sure there's no light leaks, all that kind of stuff. Got a cable release here as well um, to count for the, the, the four slash five second exposure. Yeah, so this is why I've not been doing an awful lot of filming because there's just so much to think about and apps to play about within your phone to make sure you've got the right setting when you stick a couple of um, filters on it, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So anyway, here we go. Fingers crossed um, this will work out. I've got the, I know the ones in the digital camera have worked out fine, so I'm fine with that, but yeah, video format information-wise and the detail, oof, it's nice if you nail the exposure. Here we go. So continuing the route along the Fife coast, I have reached St Monin's. Uh, St Monin is a very typical kind of um, not warm in here. Very typical harbour village on the coast of Fife. It's gorgeous. There's quite a few of them along this stretch, the east nook of Fife. This is quite a popular location for photography because there's there's a breakwater just beyond the harbour. And it's zigzagged. It's called the zigzag breakwater, a zigzag pier of St. Monin's. And it's photographed a lot, but it's it's well worth visiting because it's it's, it's such an interesting feature. And I got a lovely view right over towards Edinburgh. We've got the Bass Rock. But no, I, I did a couple of shots over there. I tried to do something slightly different, which was just off centre instead of looking directly down the zigzag uh, breakwater. I positioned myself initially over to the right. Um, kind of looking across it. Uh, it, it worked okay. It's it, it's nice to be some do some different, knowing fine well that I would eventually walk along, which I sure did, to be dead on the breakwater. So obviously, long exposure. Take the shot. I didn't film anything out there. I didn't speak out there. I didn't do any kind of um, voice recording because it's I was on top of a harbour wall. It's extremely windy, and you wouldn't have been able to make me out at all. Yeah, so again, long exposures, uh, the little stopper and the big stopper, and even the, when I was there, actually, the sun, I don't know if you can see behind me, but the sun came out, it was really quite nice. We've got lovely layers in the sky and the, and the clouds as well, so I decided to put a, a graduated filter as well on top of the 10-stop filter. Um, again, because that concrete and the structure is so dark, with that bright sun, bright sky coming through, I had to kind of control that because it was blowing out a wee bit with the long exposure. But it was good, it was nice, hopefully get some nice shots, very kind of simplistic, kind of Michael Kenna-esque uh, vibe I'm pulling for that kind of shot. Uh, I'm quite looking forward to seeing how the long exposures on the Mia came out as well. <laughs> So I don't know what the plan is now. I think I might continue round towards Anstruther, Creel, all those kind of areas, uh, which is which is just round the corner from here, and continuing on as as see fit, and see what other kind of uh, stop offs, harbour shots we can get because the sun is pushing through ever so slightly, uh, and the sky is getting a little more blue. The clouds are breaking up, um, and it's kind of midday as well. So. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what kind of opportunities we have. But they eventually make our way around to St Andrews and then, yeah, as I said, head across and then head back down to Edinburgh. So, I am in, where am I? I'm in Anstruther. So, continued through, went to Pit and Ween, stopped off there, took a couple of shots around about the harbour, which was lovely. Some nice, you know, fishing stuff and uh, colourful boats and things, tried to make the most of not very good light and I'm kind of facing the same problem here. Uh, but I'm on the harbour at the moment, I'm currently kneeling down because... So there's a big puddle on this harbour, uh, on the walkway, and beyond that there's a, it's a little lighthouse, which is lovely. Um, so what I'm trying to do, is, there's no light, so instead of just taking a straight-on picture of the lighthouse, uh, kind of a bit boring, 
I've gone low and attempting to get a reflection from the lighthouse, so, so both the lighthouse reel and the lighthouse reflection in the puddle <laughs> that is on this uh, harbour wall. Um, I think it's coming out actually. I've tried a couple, but I'm going to reposition myself so I get a, a more accurate ref reflection or a complete reflection, I guess. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, people are looking at me wondering what's going on, but hey ho.